Hello and welcome to FS Brew's first fireside chat with industry leaders. I'm Ranjit Philip. I advise startups on their digital business models, go-to-market strategies, funding, and financials. I work with an insure tech called Symbo, where we help insurers, brokers, and agents in going digital. In case you're wondering, my co-host Vidya Veerapandian is on maternity leave. Both she and the baby are hale and hearty, which is great. Uh, for today's episode, we have with us two stalwarts from the industry, Dr. Sanjeev Jha and Adrit Raha. Dr. Sanjeev Jha is the founder and principal of Strumming, a niche consultancy services focused on developing competencies of insurers, insurance brokers, distributors, service providers, and emerging insure tech entities. He's a consultant to Fairfax for their Asia operations and is actively involved in their insurance operations across multiple countries in Southeast Asia. His key, key areas of intervention are leadership development, culture strengthening, and innovation and data analytics. He's on the board of Paramount, a leading healthcare service provider based out of India. He's on the advisory board of Symbo Platform and InsurTech based in Singapore. He maintains his interest in academics and he's on the advisory board of BeamTech, a leading management institute of India. Sanjeev is a Fulbright scholar in management from the Carnegie Mellon University, Pittsburgh, and a PhD in economics. Adrit Raha is the co-founder and co-CEO at Symbo, one of the fastest growing insurtechs in the region. His focus is scaling the technology platform globally with partners across India, Singapore, Malaysia, and Indonesia. The platform supports agents, TPAs, brokers, corporates, and insurers in the seamless purchase, distribution, and administration of insurance across India and Southeast Asia. Prior to join, joining Symbo, Adrit brings over 16 plus years of experience having worked with global insurers like AIG and RSA across multiple markets and most recently leading a health tech insure tech startup called Vivant before it was merged into Symbo. Adrit is a bachelor's in arts from Knox College and an MBA from the University of Strathclyde. So let us start the fireside chat. We are delighted to be welcoming two very special guests for the Fireside Chat episode of FS Brew. I'd like to welcome Dr. Sanjeev Jha, who is the founder and principal of Strumming. I'm sure you will correct me on the spelling later. A niche <laughs> consultancy service focused on developing competencies of insurers, insurance brokers, distributors, service providers, and emerging insure tech entities. Also, today we have on call with us Adrit Raha, who is the co-CEO and co-founder of Symbo Insurance, a Singapore-based platform offering digital market-ready solutions for Southeast Asia and uh, India's insurance providers, brands, F Affinity, and end customers. So welcome and thanks for joining me on the FS Brew podcast and videocast. Uh, happy to have you here. Very happy to be here, uh, Ranjit. Very happy to be here. And, thanks, Ranjit. And I, Good to be here. And I'm conscious uh, you're in India and Singapore, so you know we don't want to keep you uh, waiting for too long. So let's get into it. So first, I'd like to ask you, how and why did you come to join the insurance industry? I mean, it's not usually a, a, a very sexy industry that people start to aspire to. So perhaps Sanjeev, we'll hear from you and then go to other. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful question. So I joined the insurance industry many, many years, decades back. And I think the primary reason, Ranjit, for joining was that uh, um, I was told that if you join the insurance industry in India that time, and that time it was all in the government sector, so it was in the public sector, you get a house. Now, that's a huge perk because you get an apartment to live in Bombay. So that was my prime motive. <laughs> so I said, I must qualify, join the insurance industry so that, you know, at some point or the other, I'll get an apartment to live in Bombay, which I did. So I was very fortunate to be living uh, as a young, as a young couple that time, yeah. uh, in our own independent flat in in Bombay. So that was quite exciting. Fantastic, fantastic. That's a great story. How about you, Adri? Well, mine's uh, mine's probably funner, but less uh, less uh, <laughs> glamorous as Sanjeev's. So so I was um, um, you know loitering around a golf course in 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 a small country in the Middle East when Sanjeev happened to find me. <laughs> and um, you know, it was uh, completely by chance that we met, of course. But but most importantly, um, uh, convinced me to join a very interesting industry called insurance. Um, wasn't sure what I was getting into, of course, at that time. But uh, I must say, uh, learned from one of the best, uh, and and have absolutely no regrets being being part of this. 
Fantastic, fantastic. That, that means we have to talk about golf insurance at some point. <laughs> <laughs> so, so here we go again. So, guys, uh, obviously, we have just been we are going through a humanitarian tragedy, and you know, coming out of uh, it, and uh, hopefully, with all the you know vaccination trend going in the right direction. So, what are the sort of main customer trends that you're both seeing in the insurance industry? during last year and what do you think will stay beyond the covid pandemic maybe i'll throw it off to uh, sanjeev first and then adri um i think i think uh, ranjit there were a couple of things that uh, that uh, that impacted all of us uh, when covid uh, came in the radar sometime in january of 2020 i think that was a time when we, when all of us in our in our risk uh, committees we realized that there's there's a possibility uh, uh, a flu about to emerge across the world uh, of course that time we didn't know it's going to be a pandemic of of this calamity yeah uh, so a couple of things happened one was obviously the entire race to was digital and saying that you know how do we service how do we keep our lights on when we can't access offices i don't think people realize at that time that it was such a dramatic change in behavior because subsequent to after a few months of being there and now actually more than a year of being there what has become very very visible is that um, employees want an option to work from wherever they want to work they don't want to be forced to come to office they would like to come to office but they don't want to be forced to come to office customers definitely don't want to come to a crowded place they never wanted to come to a crowded place earlier but we were sort of you know we were ignoring it but now definitely that has become very clear intermediaries again they will follow where the customers are so that's that's again something that is happening Mm-hmm. now now that is that is the that is the visible manifestation of what happened in the pandemic that you have to maintain distance physical distance but what that does to the to the insurance industry was very very dramatic and is still going through if you know as 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 the saying goes insurance is sold and there are insurance agents so insurance by nature has been a very physical handshake going for a drink with a broker meeting a client it's been a very very physical interaction sort of building the trust now yeah. all that has to be done through a zoom or through a ms team which has been a, a fairly a dramatic shift in the way people are behaving and the people have to engage uh, the good old school of hey take him out for a drink or to go out for lunch or go out for dinner that that is over now yeah and uh, and i think that's 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 a, that's a change that is happening yeah. uh, so that's that's a major thing now what is also happening behind it at the at the management level is that uh, uh, the 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 entire buzzword of agility has become very alive mm-hmm. i think companies that are going to survive are companies that are very very agile and for that if you go a bit more back if you really go down deep the companies that will be agile will be companies which have a very strong culture mm-hmm. which have a empowered culture which allows individuals to work from wherever so there's no physical reporting line so these are all dramatic changes in the way management was done uh, till march of 2020 and uh, as as the months are progressing i think we're all changing with that Yeah. I don't think the jury is out. I don't think I don't think the conclusion has been reached. I think there is there is still there is still scope to fine tune and evolve the the post pandemic way of doing business. Not merely for insurance, but I think for for a, for the wider financial services and many other businesses. Yeah. What about you, Adri? Yeah, no, I think I think I have to echo with with Sanjeev. Uh, quite quite um, you know quite robustly covered. I, th- I think from a perspective of customer trends specifically, is that. um you know i guess customers want want everything at their doorstep right and i think i'll give you two examples where i've seen an impact that's that's been significant and there's an impact that's yet to be proven right and then if you look at the world of i think communication what we are doing today and perhaps what we have had to evolve to um is is a is a massive skyrocket in the entire visual um communication tools right so zoom yeah. microsoft teams google uh, and you're seeing a, a significant adoption of that across both consumer personal and consumer sort of commercial right in the sense of business yeah. um what you what you're also seeing is um an interesting spike and, and this is the parallel that I'll draw to it so so that's a good example of where things have been revolutionized and probably here to sort of stay uh, as sanjeev said the jury is not yet out so it'll it'll be interesting to see where that stabilizes but i think that's definitely an area that's been completely disrupted um the other which is interesting is is closer to sort of insurance and insurtech is is you see the world of you know telehealth telemedicine right yeah. 
yeah. and whether or not that really plays a part in sort of disrupting our our healthcare and health tech landscape or insurance and insure tech landscape that is a bigger question right in my view i think that still is yet to be seen whether or not um um you know that's going to create create a a completely differentiated impact or not because that does still need physical touch that still needs physical interaction um and that's where i think i think it's a balance of both so so the reason i gave you the two examples and one of the things we do is you know we do try and work in the digital or or retail space quite a lot when you look at embedded insurance right mm-hmm. and we have a firm belief that retail and face to face isn't going away i think it's going to become more efficient and i think digital is going to play a part there and i think that's been proven by uh, sort of the entire covid uh, impact yeah no that's that's very good So uh Adrid staying with you uh you're very much in the APAC uh ecosystem now uh so and we hear a, a lot of noise about insurtech a lot of funding yeah. so what would you say is driving you know insurtech in APAC so much and why is there such a tremendous amount of funding and activity Yeah no that's a great question so I I think uh, I'd like to break it up in two parts right so the first is you know I I I have a firm belief I think insurance has a long way to go before it becomes sexy right and and I think that's that's an important one right I think it's important because you know I I compare it to the banking revolution that's happened over the last 30 years and banking is reasonably sexy you know I don't mind you know operating a a, a banking relationship through my mobile phone I think insurance has a long way to go and I think that's one of the big um reasons why there's a lot of interest um in in insurance uh right or in shortech and i think the second is when you look at the landscape across asia pacific uh i think there's some key driving factors you've got you know double digit growth happening across um south asia and southeast asia you've got sub 2% insurance penetration um and you've got a whole lot of friction uh and what i mean by friction is you know it's just inefficient um whether it's it's the payout to intermediaries or whether it's the actual ability for a customer to get their policy or make a claim Yeah. Uh, and i think those are the real reasons why insurance um needs to be disrupted right needs to be solved for in a lot of ways and it's drawing the right kind of attention from from investors and hopefully incumbents yeah so i think those are important points i think uh, the friction aspect is absolutely critical uh s- switching uh, to sanjeev a bit you've had a, a long and varied career across multiple countries uh oman sri lanka india tell us in your opinion what what is the commonality in the insurance industry is there and and what where and how is it different hey yeah, ranjit i think we are blessed to be in a in a trade which is uh, which is genuinely global i think if you've done insurance in in brazil you'll know insurance in mumbai so i think i think that's that's the yeah. magical thing of 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 contracting a risk and pricing a risk is the same science um I think I think where where the differences happen is really which football team do you follow or do you do you, <laughs> do you follow a football team or do you just look at look at cricket uh, but ultimately people are the same I've I've realized that and I've been fortunate Ranjit that you said I've, I've worked with many in di- many different cultures and and with many different people even now I'm involved with the businesses in Vietnam in Malaysia Indonesia mm-hmm. and I think what 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 resonates very very clearly is that ultimately all of us want to do a good job we want to pat on the back we want to go home we want to yep. feel loved we want to feel grateful we want to feel happy and that's it and and that's that's really it there's nothing there's no magic science and actually insurance does allow us to do that because um, uh, i think it's it's a, when you look at the trade of insurance um, it can be deemed as a fairly noble profession if you do it well yep. if the business is constructed well where where you do it well and you're actually looking at building resilience in the society um just just on on the on your previous question to to other i think one of the things that uh, i had i had recently done as part of the consultancy was done a done a survey of of uh, young kids and when i'm saying young kids younger than me that so the entire world is younger than me right. but basically the age age was from between 25 to about uh, 40 people who are still who are earning and uh, the question as well. that i asked <laughs> yeah 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 so the questions are very simple and the question was like you know do you think you have a risk in life and the answer was yes we are definitely we know there's a risk in life what are the big risks so physical health mental well-being you no know, economic stability these were all the all the things do you need do you think you need insurance yeah i would love to have insurance do you know where to get insurance no i don't know okay. where would you go to get advice on insurance most probably to a friend and family 
Yeah. So I think that's that's the friction that Adit was talking is that there is a huge demand to mitigate risk. You know, a huge demand, but somehow the insurance industry hasn't been able to tap it, and now possibly with the with the with the entire uh, uh, technology in place. Uh, I think with the with the with the change of behavior that this pandemic has forced on us, I think uh, I think uh, people like Simbo and Adwit are very well placed to really tap into that and you know that that entire demand that has been left untapped so far. Yeah. Uh, so very, very exciting space that we have. Yeah, I mean, I think you're right when you ask that question. Uh, the commonality of the answers are very uh, surprisingly similar, yeah. and perhaps it's the you know, it's the big tech, it's the exposure to the yeah. same e-commerce platforms that we are uh, yeah. exposed to in, in the Middle East or in the India or, or in the US. You know, the, the young population that you mentioned is, is almost pretty much having the same belief system, you would agree. Yes. Uh, yes. So, yeah, it's interesting. It's, it's also how can the insurers and insurtechs take advantage of that commonality and grow is a, is a good question. Mm -hmm. Adrit, you wanted to chip in there? Yeah, it's, 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 it, it, that, that's the best part, right? I mean, if you're able to solve for keeping life simple, keeping insurance simple, um, keeping it uh, easily accessible, and most importantly, and I think this is the part which a lot of us, even, even me included when I was in insurance, didn't think enough of, right? Was at the time of a claim, the moment of truth has to be um, easy. It's okay. gotta be convenient for the customer. And it's got to be um, something that they believe that they will get, you know, mm -hmm. solved for them. And I think that's the big perception that, you know, hopefully we are able to impact not just the ease of insurance distribution, but also the ease of the claims process. Yeah. Perfect. Uh, so uh, other staying with you again a bit. Uh, uh, so this is about technology and, and we have seen how it's transforming the insurance landscape over the last let's say five, six years, it's kind of caught steam. So yeah. uh, what, in your opinion, are some of the key technologies to watch out for? How is it transforming the insurance landscape? Uh, Adrit first, and then we'll go to Sanjeev. Yeah, so, so technology is quite interesting, right? So I think technology is going to become a staple die. That's the way I look at it, right? I think it's going to be an enabler to anything we do. That said, I think where we are today is we're seeing a lot of buzz around what I, what I call low code and no code. And, and really... The definition in my head of what low code and no code is, is that it allows for um, anybody to use technology in an easy manner. So uh, technology was previously clunky, difficult to maneuver, difficult to change, difficult to implement. I think now what we're seeing is that revolution where it's easy to implement, it's easy as a DIY sort of um, platform that allows somebody to buy a Zoom account online or buy or, or change sort of product, insurance product on a platform sitting on your own desk. Um, mm -hmm. I think that's really the, the transformation that we're seeing today with an ult ultimate state that I think it's going to become, um, you know, a part and parcel of everyday life. And it's going to be an enabler to any business really more than anything else. Right. Sanjeev? Hey, Ranjit, I think, I think by, by, by default, um, uh, most of the legacy insurers have, have sort of focused on the on the saving the cost part by using technology. And I'll come to the technology that has been used, but mo most of the insurance companies by default have spent most dollars in terms of how do I reduce the leakage in claims? How do I reduce the frauds? How do I really control the, the, the possible uh, bad loss adjustment? Yeah. And, and there the technologies that are really working and already working really smartly are, is all about data. I think the data science team have, have really cracked it beautifully. Um, I've, I've been using that our, in my earlier companies, we used to be implemented with about three, four years back and it's showing excellent results in terms of being able to find out leakages. I think the potential of data science is immense because yeah. what it does is that it is allowing the, not only, it's, it, you know, earlier we were using it as a, as a post, post facto sort of analysis of say fraud or leakages. Now in, you can actually do it prior to onboarding a customer. So, yeah. so I can actually, you know, I can actually data science Ranjit and say, okay, I'm going to charge him extra money because he seems like a guy who can, you know, who can pay more, things like that. Yeah. So that profiling happens and which, and then with that allows a bespoke journey of the customer journey, right from start to the, to the, to the renewal process. So, which is, which is a very, very exciting process. I think the other area is this entire process of, of image and voice. 
I think while image technology has been used fairly extensively and it's coming into place with the, uh, especially on claims and motor claims and audit functions yeah. uh, and also on medical, like as others were mentioning, I think voice is something that is still emerging. Yeah. Uh, that's a very exciting area where by, 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 by the voice intonations, one can make out if, the, if there is credibility in the, in the responses or not. Yeah. So that's, that's an amazing, amazing um, technology that is, that is being played around. Uh, the third area is around KYC, like how do I make sure that the insured is the insured, especially when, when, we, when you get down into the inclusive and, the, and that segment. So that's, that's a big area. Yeah. And then, of course, the, 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 the making it easy for the customer by where Adrit is positioned uh, with Symbo. How does, it, how, how does technology make it really seamless between the point of sale, between the customer and the underwriter? I think that, that entire thing is a very magical piece. But overall, man, great stuff. It's, it's very exciting just now what, what is happening on technology. Yeah. And, and hopefully the monies will keep flowing in into the insure techs and the insurance companies. So hopefully <laughs> so yeah, that, should, that shouldn't dry out. Absolutely, absolutely. I, I think it does seem to be following uh, some of the hype cycle, you know. And, and if, you, if you look at the news today, it's all about, you know, crypto and Dogecoin mm. and stuff like that. But if you look at the underlying technology, blockchain, it has mm. tremendous utilization, sure. you know, ability to be used in insurance, right? I mean, after sure. all, it's nothing but a, a, a three-party ledger and sure. A, sure. A, a Absolutely. smart contract. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. yeah. And especially when when there is when when there's so much concern on privacy, like for example, all of us are concerned about our privacy. But if I have a road accident, I'm okay for the ambulance to read part of my data. Yeah, and I think that's where the blockchain thing really comes in. That you know, you can you can give access to different. Uh, components to different people and that makes it quite quite easy to bind a contract amongst the third party and amongst three or four or more parties so. absolutely Adri, do you want to chip in on the technology front yes yeah, so i think i think just um, sanjeev was absolutely right so interestingly we've we've experimented with um, uh, a claims process for a recently launched uh, shoe insurance initiative in india right. where the claims process actually is um, um, visual recording of the person talking about the damage of the shoe purely for the reason that as Sanjeev mentioned that, you know, you know, the, the, the typical um, uh, physical recording, actually a, you're able to detect fraud uh, instances, mm -hmm. but B the nature of humans are such that uh, you would be less inclined to uh, sort of uh, register a fraud, fraudulent claim if you were recording <laughs> your own self. So it's quite interesting to see uh, both these dynamics play out. But I think, I think, no, I think, I think from, a, from a symbol perspective, uh, Ranjit, you know, tech, technology is absolutely key to what we do, right? I think we, that is the backbone of our, our, our business and, and the innovation that we sort of lead. And we're really, really passionate about the fact that we bring technology to incumbents, whether they're insurers or brokers um, or whether they're big brands and really enable that uh, distribution strategy for, for insurance for them. And that's, that's all hinged on the fact that you've got these clunky, old, archaic platforms that are very difficult to maneuver. So, so sort of that's where we come in and we're seeing um, a lot of, lot of movement in that technology platform space. Uh, moving on to the next question. Uh, what do you think about the relationship between insurtechs and insurance and generally the insurance value chain? Uh, how do you think this relationship has evolved? Uh, where do you think it's going? Adrit, maybe we'll start with you. Oh yeah, absolutely. So I, you know, I, I think it's, it's quite interesting because we obviously faced this for the last few years in terms of you know what are you doing? Are you trying to disrupt the space and are you trying to take over my space? You know, it's it's sort of this boundary boundary sort of uh, question. I, I mean, I mean, listen. I think um, we've always had a very very firm uh, position in in the way we approach our business as an insure tech startup, right? Which is we, we want to work with incumbents. We want to work with existing insurers and brokers, and we want to sort of um, use that as an opportunity to disrupt um, sort of the entire entire process that we are focusing on, which is around distribution and, and efficiency. Um, you know, I think there are players in the insure tech landscape that are clearly working towards disrupting the entire insurance uh, space. Yeah. Um, I think taking a step back, we're at probably at a uh, at the cusp, right? I think we're we're still just barely seeing some of the disruption that's coming through, be it with incumbents or be it in general. Um, and I think it's it's quite interesting. It's going to be, in my view, a thirty year journey, as it has been for various other industries. And we're just at the cusp of it. So so yeah, that that's that's where I think uh, uh, we're seeing that. 
Yeah. And Sanjeev, you've been on the other side, perhaps you've been approached by InsurTechs. How has the relationship evolved? I think it's been, uh, it's been very good and um, uh, very early, at, like, I think uh, more than five, six years back, uh, I realized uh, two things. One is that the people who are behind InsurTech are supremely bright in, in areas of technology, uh, which we guys in the insurance industry don't have that skill set. We have great technology people, but that uh, the, the, the techies that are there in InsurTech are really at the, at the edge, you know, so that, that's, that's a big difference. The second thing I realize is that they are very, very, um, they are very, very hungry to do something to change the world. Mm -hmm. Now, both these are great. So yeah, if you have incredible talent and you have a desire to change the world and as the legacy insurance company, I have the data, I have the money and I have the customers. Yeah. So, so, so my, my offer to the guys and it's, it's actually worked, I think. And my offer to the guys and, and I, I used to put it out on LinkedIn and stuff like that saying, come and talk to me. Yeah. If you think you're bright and you have an idea, I have the data, I have the money, I have an office for you to sit, come and talk to me. And that's how we, we, we sort of started very early with the, with the entire fraud and analytics sometime back when I was in Sri Lanka. Yeah. Uh, we started a claim, service, a claim um, uh, settlement for using a mobile phone and smartphone. This was pre-pandemic. Mm -hmm. And in fact, that, that, that one Fairfax, the company I was working for, the, that won the, the global award across Fairfax Group. So, right. so I think these, there's a bunch of smart kids running around all across the world. Yep. And there are legacy insurance companies who are desperately in need to find some agility. I think from, from, from a legacy perspective, I think I was quite clear that we will try out 10 things. Most probably one is going to succeed. Yep. The others will collapse and that's fine. As long as, the, as long as the resources aren't too much, as long as the funding isn't too much, uh, Favorite saying of mine is that keep trying, you know, and let's let's fail quickly or succeed, you know, yeah. um, quickly. Like let's not waste too much time on that. But I think as as Adrit mentioned, it's not about changing the world on your own. I think those, especially in insurance, you can't do that. Yeah. By by nature of the business, it's 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 a it's a sharing of risk. Right. So you you can't change the world on your own. So you'll have to rely on multiple partners, and therefore this 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 ability to work together, I think, is very powerful. Yeah, absolutely. And one additional, uh, you know, strong point of the incumbents is that they have access to compliance, right? I mean, they hold the legal right. relationships absolutely. with absolutely the regulators. Right. So. Absolutely right. And and I must say on, on that note, the regulators are are like as it happens with with any any new changes. I think the regulators are are trying their best to catch up. Yeah. Like you know, I I remember like you know, thirty years back, bank assurance was a big deal, and the regulators didn't understand it. Then the mobile telephone insurance that, that, that happened, that they didn't understand that. Now, insure tech is happening. Now, they, they won't understand that, but they will understand it over, over some time. So, so that's, I think that's the nature of technology. That's the nature of uh, innovation. It yeah. pushes um, the entire uh, ecosphere to sort of uh, evolve to a different level. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. It's quite interesting to see, Ranjit. I don't know, but we, we've had this experience ourselves with you know Dubai and Singapore creating these mini hubs yeah. and all led by the actual government and the actual regulators, which is quite quite good to see them, well, as Sanjeev says, trying to keep up. So it's yes. nice. Indeed, indeed. Uh, talking about innovation, uh, how do you see the role of, you know, the so-called super apps like, you know, Grab, Gojek, uh, you know, or FinTechs like PhonePay in insurance distribution? Is that going to increase or, or is it just an attempt to emulate what has worked in China, for example, with WeChat and Tencent and all that? Uh, how do you see that going? Uh, Any one of you? <laughs> okay, well, okay, I'll, I'll 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 have a crack at it. I think I think you know it's it's um so so China is is um, a beast by itself, right? And and I mean that in a way where I think um, a, a closed framework really works. Uh, I I think the the concept of super super apps are are good. I think they're far from uh, being proven, in my view. Uh, and the reason um, I am I'm quite quite uh, convinced that I think from an insurance perspective, um, it's still a big question to me personally. Um, the reason I say that is insurance is is consumed, bought or sold, but consumed at the point of a need, mm -hmm. really. So it's when you need something, right? So be it the embedded insurance products when you're buying a mobile phone or buying your spectacles and you get a specific relevant product, or you're buying. Um, you know, a house or a big building and you need sort of the large commercial property type type products. From, mm -hmm. from my perspective, it's always at that point of need that you typically, um, you know, uh, 
uh, find the solution of insurance. Now, super apps um, don't necessarily solve for that at this point. I think they solve for it at a very generalistic stage. Mm. Will that change in time? Most likely. And will that change for one core reason, which Sanjeev's already mentioned, which is around data and availability of data? Yeah. Absolutely. I, th I think that's where we will potentially see a shift. But um, let me take another step back and just say, what's stopping Google or Apple from becoming the world's biggest insurance company? Yeah. Right? And I just leave that as a thought for, for, for us to perhaps, you know, discuss. Yeah. Sanjeev, your thoughts? Yeah, I think, I think they're, 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 they're primarily three parts of, of insurance, sir, Ranjit. I think, I think the distribution play will go to many, many, many entities. Like, the, 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 like I said, like the bank assurance, today's bank assurance is not the city banks and the, and the, and the HSBCs. It is these, these apps. It's, it is the Alibabas. And it's, it's, that, is, that is a bank assurance today that we are having. Um, the challenge of underwriting will remain. Now, whether that underwriting is owned by a Google or a XYZ, don't know. But definitely distribution will get shifted to, to all these various things. I, I don't think there'll, there'll be a, there, if there's a customer there, distribution will come, insurance distribution will go there. Yeah. Um, underwriting will remain as, as a core entity and it will be highly regulated. The entire area will be regulated. So that's gonna be a different, a different entity by itself. And then you have the third part, which is the claims management. Mm -hmm. And uh, now claims management, I think, will get uh, divided between the, 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 the front end and the underwriters. And that's where it's going to come out. Uh, traditionally, underwriters have been very, very um, picky about how to delegate the claims out. Yes. But I think that those days are slowly going to get involved because, again, of technology, data, and there'll be more comfort and more transparency coming in. Uh, so that's, 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 the, that's the way I see it evolving. It's not so much the app. It's basically like, where, where's the customer? Where is she residing? And if she's going to XYZ app, there will be distribution there. There will be. Yeah. And it just has to be done in a way that it makes sense to the customer is what I'm hearing from yeah. both of you. Yeah. yeah. Very good. Uh, and staying with China for a bit, uh, when we look at now big companies uh, like Ping An, uh, you know, there are tens of thousands of tech talent, perhaps even more tech people than underwriters and claims that, that you spoke about. Is this what modern insurance companies will look like? And, and how is the war for talent playing out, you know, in your startup and, and from your insurance company days, Sanjeev? Uh, it'll be interesting to know. Sanjeev, so Pingan is clearly, Pingan has clearly set a different, uh, different uh, benchmark on using technology, uh, Ranjit. Yeah. Um, absolutely a different benchmark, right? From their agency force to everything that's, that's become at a, so they, they've gone at a, at a very different level and, and it, it, is, it, is, it is generating fantastic results from what I understand, it saved them ex a fair, fair amount on the efficiency part and also on the profitability part. So, so clearly they are, they're doing something extremely well. Um, will that, will that skill set come to insurance company? Answer is definitely yes. It's like saying like, you know, will, will, will the insurance, like if, if you look back um, if, if you look back to the insurance industry, say 40 years back when I joined, um, we didn't have computers at office. We had a computer room, right? Uh, and then the thing was, oh, do you know, do you know how to use MS, MS Word? Do you know how to use Excel? Do you know how to use data, Lotus? So these were the skills that were emerging. Right. You know, and it's, it's, it's just routine. So I think, I think all insurance companies, if you look 30 years down the line, all insurance companies will have a very strong tech team or they'll have a partnership with a very strong tech team. Um, but the issue is that will it happen in the next one year, two years? So that's that's where the challenge is, and that's where the I think the insurance companies, the legacy companies, are also deciding where do they put their investments in. Yeah. The global majors like the AIGs and the AXAs and all those guys, Fairfaxes, they have their own incubation center where they're playing around with technology, and they just come and plug and play it as and when seamlessly done. Right. But for the smaller companies, I think that would be a bit of a challenge going ahead. But to answer you. If you look at the insurance industry 30 years down the line, will they have capabilities of Pingan? Answer is definitely yes. What Pingan will be it will be quite different that time. Yeah, yeah, indeed. So, how is the war for talent playing out uh, in your domain, Adrit? So it's quite. Um, so, from our perspective, you know, we we are seeing obviously a lot of people that are interested in the world of startups, right? So, we we are we are we're seeing an interesting shift where maybe 10 years ago, and, and I can't go back 40, but I'll say 10 years ago, you know, <laughs> people were people were keen to go into you know the traditional world of whether whether it was 
banking or, or, or sort of a suit and tie type job, or even at that point, perhaps some of the early starters of Facebook and Google and, and, and you know, those, those interesting companies were, were emerging. What we're seeing now is um, a, a huge host of youngsters coming out and only wanting to be part of this new revolution of um, um, startup culture right? Be it in a large organization or a small organization, the expectation is that, um, you know, you, you represent startup culture, you represent independence, you represent uh, um, this, this entire sharing, sharing economy. Um, you know, um, I, I, can, I can work from home, I can do what I want, and I'm independent and allow me that. Um, to, to, to put it in perspective, uh, that doesn't mean it's easy for us. Uh, we, we find it equally hard to get good talent. Um, and we are finding it very, very difficult because while China has clearly proven that they've been able to sort of uh, bring bring this huge machinery of both people, talent, and and uh, an example through through the businesses that they've they've uh, you know um, uh, showcased, what we're seeing here is that there's still a dearth of good talent, and we see that in Southeast Asia, we see that good talent in India gets picked up and and you know taken on with um, sort of the larger larger more established startups. And I'm sure it's very similar in the Middle East, Ranjit, where it's yeah. probably not the easiest place to come by the best tech, tech talent. Uh, yeah. I, I think we will see that change. We will see that change. It will become a bit more um, prevalent, more relevant, and therefore more people will be available uh, in the next few years. The question as Sanjeev posed, and it's a very relevant question, is it now? Is it imminent? Is it going to impact the insurance sector today or is it going to take some time? Um, and I, I think time will only tell. Yeah, I think that's, there's a very interesting uh, capability gap, uh, Ranjit, just on this theme. Yeah. It's, the, it's the gap between um, insurance domain people and the tech, tech yeah. people. Yeah. So while you have incredible data science people and they can understand the problem of the insurance industry, but it's very difficult for them to make a CEO of a legacy system, make him understand that this is what it's going to do you. Yeah. And that's, that's, that's a huge, huge gap just now, currently. Yeah, yeah. Um, and I think that's that's yeah. It's it's a, it's, a, it's a tough challenge to fulfill as as of now. Yeah, I mean, hearing you say, I mean, I, I remember the times when we were in tech companies where you need somebody called a business analyst who would bridge the gap between right. business and technology. You almost need some sort of I don't know what to call it a data analyst yeah. who understands <laughs> business very well. You know. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, it's also it's also Ranjit um, Sanjeev. It's also because insurance is such a unique industry, right? I think yeah. it it has come with its um, legacy and its stagnation of the way it has been, and 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 all for good reasons for when it when it did come come to be, right? But but I think because it's so unique in the way it's operated, in the way its product the products are, are brought to life, the pricing is constructed, the distribution is managed. That uh, if you don't have that bridge, it can it can certainly become uh, challenging. Right. Agreed. Agreed. So, it's, it's, a, it's a fascinating industry. One day, at one level, the insurance companies are taking all the risk of the world. Yeah. At the other level, because they're taking all the risk, they have to be super conservative in their own in their own <laughs> risk taking. Yeah. That's, that's, that's the irony of the insurance industry. Yeah. Absolutely. Now, uh, you know, now we'll do a little bit of crystal ball gazing, uh, and you know, I just want to ask both of you what do, what do you think? A couple of things that will change, let's say, in the next five to ten years. And what will still remain the same? Maybe Sanjeev, you can go first. Hmm. I think I think my golf game is going to become better. <laughs> <laughs> that 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 hope remains always. Uh, but okay, in terms of insurance, I think um, I think the distribution is going to change dramatically. Mm -hmm. I think um, forget the forget the term agency because I know that within the term agency many different types of uh, entities are there, but the good old fashioned manual agents source is gonna, they're gonna disappear. Yeah. Um, I think, uh, and it's gonna disappear because of a simple, uh, simple reason, uh, Ranjit, is that uh, insurance as a product is becoming fungible. So earlier, because it was a manual process, we were forced to write, especially in the PNC side, we were supposed to write one year policies because uh, you, you just couldn't take the underwriting information for a day policy or a, or a half a day or a six month policy. It was just not possible. Mm. Uh, now that, that technology has, has broken that barrier. So the need of an individual to go and fill up the form for a Ranjit Philip is really not there anymore. Yeah. Um, 
and of course people the, the people who are entrenched in that uh, in the legacy they talk about relationship and all that i'm not a big fan of that i think i think as a, as what the pandemic has shown people switch their behavior so quickly that uh, it's just it's just magical so i think i think that entire distribution play is going to move from the that individual agency which is a big force today yeah. uh, it'll, it's going to move to something else we've already spoken about how the, the new bank assurance are the alibabas and these you know these these the other new bank assurance players uh, the old banks are sort of losing their own steam um i think the other area is going to be on risk i think there'll be a fair amount of parametric driven uh, products coming up yeah so like claim the entire underwriting will be driven based on parameter parameters which can be very quickly picked up from the from the from the entire public data that is available whether it's on travel whether it's on crop whether it's on flooding whether it's policies like you know wedding event cancellation so yeah. you don't have to fill up a form now you just know whether there's been a rain there and and the and the claim is processed so i think that's going to change quite dramatically um i think with all this all this aspects uh, the regulator will keep chasing uh chasing compliance and that's going to be an interesting play because obviously no regulator wants to constrain the innovation that is there but at the same time they need to understand what is happening to make sure that the public funds or the public trust that the insurance company is supposed to take is is maintained so i think that's going to happen uh yes yeah, time these are these are couple of thoughts ranji yep uh, adrit what do you think will change and what will remain the same yes yeah, so i think i think um, it's quite interesting right so i i think couple of things i think um, close to sanjeev's point i think close to the sort of entire space of parametrics you know I, i've been quite close to and passionate about this entire U- ubi or usage based right and i think um it's it's beyond usage it's lifestyle based it's usage based it's um, uh, circumstance based and i think that's where insurance will move to right and i think that's one of the big changes that's going to happen and i think it's going to follow the trend of the new millennial generation moving forward which is um you know um the the need to not have assets the need to sort of embrace the sharing economy um the 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 embracement of sort of uh um the airbnb concepts so so i think i think i think that's where um i anticipate some, some of this movement will happen where insurance will be based on sort of where you are what you want um based on usage if it was an auto insurance some of the latest trends we are seeing is you know when you're buying a cycle you could get a cycle insurance again based on sort of usage of that product and your time on the cycle right yeah. so i think that that's one of the areas that will change i think an area that i still feel that you know and probably slightly contradictory to sanjeev's point around distribution i think i i still believe that the the regions that we represent in southeast asia and india mm-hmm. um are are still very very uh still have time to evolve right and while e-commerce as a revolution is happening and the super apps are are certainly picking up pace i still firmly believe that i think the digital construct of transaction the o2o as i call it which is the physical digital or online to offline are still areas that will continue for uh, a foreseeable future mm-hmm. uh, and again time will tell if if things don't but 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 that's my view for at least india and the broader southeast asian sub, sort of region Yeah. And, I, and I agree with uh, uh, Adrit uh, just now. So I just uh, I just moved back to 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 Delhi after after being out for some years, and it's such a pleasure, uh, Rajiv, because uh, we stay in this apartment in a, in an area, and every every two hours or something or one hour, we have we have this cart fellow roaming around selling different things, right. you know, mangoes and stuff like that. So that is that is very very physical, very very like you know goes back hundreds of years, and he's actually the man is actually on a cart and. either cycling and selling all these house to house yeah but you buy the stuff and you make payment and he has a upi for payment yeah. so he don't take cash <laughs> this <laughs> is a wallet right just transfer the, yeah so which is which is magical so yeah. you have you have this uh, this entire combination of the physical world the old school world yeah. but transacting in a very very uh, um, but and all all around the customer convenience mm mm-hmm. yeah. uh so i think that's that's that that remains the that will never change i think the focus on customer convenience will will never change yeah yeah absolutely anything more to add adrit no no i think that that was that was it perfect very good gentlemen that that has been an absolute pleasure i've i've learned a lot by asking you questions it's very easy for me to just ask questions and learn so i, I love this uh, format So I just want to say thank you very much for joining us on the FS Brew podcast and video cast, and we hope to have you back again for a fireside chat at some other time. 
No, Man, thanks, Ranjit. Well, and thank you, Sanjeev, as always. Take care, thank Adrit. And uh, Ranjit, let us know when you're back from San Francisco. <laughs> Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Take care, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>